Stop dating. Okay, sir. We are friends. We are Project Manas, the official AI and robotics team of Manipal Institute of Technology. Our unmanned aerial system is designed to perform the mission demonstration at SUAS 2024. We present to you the flight readiness review of Freya. As per the mission statement, any UAS must traverse 15 miles of waypoint split into five laps, along with an additional estimated distance of 0.16 miles to find ODLC objects, all within a total time of 30 minutes. As such, to ensure mission success while maintaining a 20% time buffer, we calculate a required average cruising speed of 39.82 miles per hour. To maintain this, Freya is designed to perform flight operations with a cruising speed of 40 miles per hour and a top speed of 69.35 miles per hour. We also accounted for a safe limit for battery discharge, ensuring that it always remains over 20 percent. This limit gave us a flight time of 18 minutes per battery, which allows us to complete the mission with only one battery swap. Each airdrop payload weighs a total of 1.32 pounds. Well within the three pounds as set by the rules. Our hexacopter Freya spans eight feet wide and stands two feet tall. It is powered by T Motors Anti Gravity MN eight zero one four and can carry a maximum payload of up to fifteen kgs. Freya is equipped with two main batteries to power the motors and two auxiliary batteries. One to power the gimbal and the other for all the onboard electronics on the drone. We use two here three GPS modules to provide high positional accuracy. A Pixar Cube Orange is our choice for flight controller, along with a Raspberry Pi four for triggering image capture from our camera, which is stabilized by our two-axis gimbal. These images are then transferred over to the ground station over a point-to-point -point communication network. Any mission begins with a comprehensive series of pre-flight checks. Upon passing, the payload is secured to the airdrop delivery mechanism. Now, the safety pilot and GCS operator are given the green flag to begin the mission. After completing the initial set of waypoints, Freya begins covering the airdrop area, looking for ODLC objects. If an object is detected, its coordinates are stored and transmitted back to the ground station. These coordinates are then used for all subsequent airdrops. We utilize a Canon EOS R50 DSLR camera, which is supported by a two-axis gimbal with a resolution of 6,000 into 4,000 pixels. The camera is lightweight and has a sensor size of 22.3 into 14.9 millimeters, giving it a large field of view. The gimbal control system. Consists of an IMU mounted on the camera to estimate the instantaneous orientation of the camera, a T motor GB542 BLDC motor for the roll axis, and GB4106 BLDC motor for the pitch axis. The entire system is controlled using a simple BGC two-axis brushless gimbal controller driver, which interfaces with three components of the gimbal and ensures a stabilized camera. The motors are extensively PID tuned to ensure swift corrective actions by the gimbal motors in response to vibrations of the camera. The gimbal was tested by simulating disturbances of varying frequencies across the roll and pitch axis. During coverage of the airdrop area, image capture is controlled by a Raspberry Pi, and captured images along with the relevant geospatial data is transmitted to the ground-based ODLC station. Via a point-to-point -point communication network operating over a frequency of 5 gigahertz via the Rocket 5AC light, images are passed through a custom deep learning pipeline for detection and classification of ODLC objects, which consists of a YOLO V9 architecture for generating regions of interest. Each of which are subsequently passed into four custom ResNet-based models, each trained to specialize in classification of object shape, object color, letter, and letter color, respectively. For detection of emergent objects, we deploy a specialized pipeline that involves passing the regions of interest to a specially trained 4D human transformer architecture. 
The deep learning pipeline's predictions are stored and converted to global GPS coordinates along with specification of the ODLC object, which are stored as airdrop targets. Airdrop mechanism employs a winch system to safely lower the payload. This winch is triggered by a rack and pinion arrangement. A servo motor rotates the pinion 90 degrees such that the rack moves back and an airdrop object is released by the winch. The winch mechanism features a spool for winding the nylon rope that lowers the bottle to the ground. One end of the rope is attached to an auxiliary payload support that secures and descends with the bottle as a single unit with the other end of the rope attached to the spool. The spool is controlled via a DC motor. The entire airdrop system has been 3D printed with careful material selection to ensure maximum durability. The rack and pinion mechanism undergoes significant wear and tear during flight. To counter this, drop mechanism and winding spool were printed using carbon fiber reinforced nylon, a material known for its high toughness. Additionally, thermoplastic polyurethane was used for the bottle holder due to its high impact resistance and flexibility allowing it to deliver the payload safely. All electronic mounts of the drone were printed with PLA because of its general availability. The testing was conducted in two phases, manual and autonomous. During the manual test, the payload was released from a building at an approximate height of 50 feet. A DC motor connected to the spool controls the descent of the payload. To prevent freefall, the DC motor is shorted with a variable resistor. This shot impedes the rotation of the motor, thereby controlling the speed of descent. Additionally, modifying the resistance of the shot through the variable resistor allows for control over the descent speed of the payload. A descent velocity of 7.5 feet per second was decided after extensive trial and error, as it was found to be a good balance between speed and ground impact. At this velocity, the bottle was safely delivered within 12 seconds with minimal drift due to the wind. Freya relies on the RFT900 radio modem for autonomous navigation. This modem operates at 900 MHz and utilizes the Mavlink protocol to transmit telemetry data at a rate of 128 kB per second. The system has a communication range of 9 miles ensuring a reliable data link between the drone and the GCS. Freya maintains clear communication with the safety pilot's remote control through an Express LRS-based long-range transceiver. Operating at 2.4 GHz and utilizing the CRSF protocol, this system facilitates the exchange of crucial data, including telemetry information and RC control data such as battery level, GPS data, signal strength, speed, and altitude. The transceiver establishes a communication range of 18 miles, exchanging CRSF command packets at an exchange rate of 250 Hz. To transmit high-quality images from the drone to the ground control station, we utilize a Ubiquiti Rocket 5AC Lite, a high-performance wireless communication system with a maximum throughput of 500 megabits per second. This system operates on the 5 GHz frequency band and leverages the TCP IP protocol for reliable data transfer. The image transmission rate is 100 megabits per second and offers a long communication range exceeding 1.2 miles. Additionally, the system maintains an exceptional reliability with a maximum packet loss rate of only 1%. The main body of our hexacopter has two main plates housing all the electronics and an additional plate to mount the gimbal. These plates along with the arm rods and landing gear are manufactured using carbon fiber chosen for its high strength to weight ratio. The arm rods have a square cross section increasing resistance towards shear and bending moment thereby improving structural integrity. The landing gear is designed with four legs connected to skids providing a stable configuration. Freya's propulsion system consists of anti-gravity MN8014 motors controlled by T-Motor Alpha 60 Ampere 12S ESCs which are mounted on the base plate. 
Each motor weighs approximately 0.87 pounds and is capable of generating 28.66 pounds of thrust. Given the drone's takeoff weight of 50.7 pounds, the system's thrust to weight ratio is calculated to be 3.4 is to 1. To maximize the efficiency of the motors, the motors are paired with 29 inch T motor propellers. The UAV's battery configuration consists of two 30,000 mAh, 44 to 48 volts, 6S 25C batteries, and two auxiliary 14.8 volts, 4,500 mAh, 40C 4S LiPo batteries. Freya is equipped with anti collision and position indicator lights in accordance with the FAA regulations, making it safe for flight during dim lighting. Extensive testing was performed to ensure that Freya surpassed the flight performance requirements for this year's competition. A total of 178 flights were carried out with a total flight time of 24 hours. During the test flights, we observed that Freya can achieve a flight range of 8.5 miles while carrying the maximum payload and has the ability to comfortably maneuver within a turn radius of 150 feet while staying within the mission flight boundary. Freya is designed for vertical takeoff and landing, maintaining a safe angle of climb and descent of 20 degrees. Freya is equipped with ArduPilot firmware and open source autopilot system capable of controlling a diverse range of aircraft types. It was selected for its robust capabilities in autonomous navigation, payload delivery and comprehensive telemetry data logging making it ideal for the demands of this year's competition. Ardupilot enables our drone to autonomously navigate to GPS waypoints while avoiding obstacles. It also supports automated payload delivery mechanisms that can be synchronized with GPS data to perform airdrops accurately. Furthermore, Ardupilot's comprehensive telemetry and logging features allow for real-time flight monitoring and post-flight analysis. This data is visualized at the GCS using Mission Planner software, satisfying the GCS display requirements for the competition. Our testing regime for the ArduPilot system included both simulation and field tests. Initially, the software in the loop simulations were used to verify flight plans and waypoint navigation. Following successful simulation tests, field tests were conducted under various environmental conditions to ascertain the system's robustness against external disturbances such as wind and physical obstacles. The system consistently demonstrated high reliability and accuracy. Over 95% of the total flight time was conducted in autonomous mode, significantly reducing the need for manual control. The system's efficiency and precision are reflected via the following metrics. Out of 50 autonomous flights, the drone spent an average of just 2 minutes in manual mode per flight. Out of 2,064 waypoints attempted, Freya successfully hit all of them within the permissible radius of 25 feet from each waypoint, giving it a waypoint accuracy score of 100%. The first stage of our obstacle avoidance strategy involves avoiding static obstacles such as buildings or no-fly zones within the designated mission area. We accomplish this by setting definite mission boundaries and establishing exclusion zones that are mapped out prior to the flight. Upon encountering an obstacle, Freya leverages the Theta Star algorithm which utilizes line-of-sight pathways, direct routes between intermediate waypoints that are unobstructed by any physical barriers. By planning along these visible pathways, the algorithm dynamically replans Freya's flight path to find the shortest route while ensuring a safe distance from obstacles, enhancing navigation efficiency and safety. For dynamic avoidance of other aircraft in the vicinity, Freya is equipped with an Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast Module configured to the flight controller. Based on the ADSB sensor's reading, the autopilot is configured to switch the behavior of the drone to climb in altitude until the tracked aircraft is beyond a certain distance threshold, following which it proceeds with its mission. Freya's obstacle avoidance capabilities were tested by carrying out flights in environments densely populated with obstacles. Freya successfully navigated through these complex environments, avoiding all obstacles and without any undue deviation from the original planned path. An octocopter design with four batteries was initially considered for enhanced speed and flight time. However, it was rejected due to budgetary constraints. 
Freya's arm rods were initially designed to have circular cross section. This was discarded since square arm rods are better at resisting bending. Circular arm rods would also require separate additional arm mounts to be mounted to the base plates, which would increase weight. To prevent this, square arm rods were ultimately selected. For the design of the airdrop assembly, PLA was initially considered as the material for 3D printing each component, with the payload being bolted in place. However, this led to instances of damaged payloads during airdrop testing and required external tools to detach the payload from the assembly. To resolve these issues, TPU was chosen over PLA with the payloads being held in place using Velcro, which resulted in a higher airdrop success rate. Rear structure is composed primarily of carbon fiber, which poses several health hazards when working with it due to exposure to epoxy and carbon dust. Therefore, appropriate gloves and masks were worn by all those involved in the manufacturing processes. The base plates are insulated to prevent electrical contact with the conductive carbon fiber and all the onboard electronics avoiding short circuits and fire hazards. Systematic motor tests and ESC calibrations are carried out to ensure component reliability. The electrical wiring is organized into a harness on the upper surface, facilitating easy maintenance and minimizing electrical risk. Prior to each flight, our safety inspectors conduct detailed checks of all mechanical, electrical and software systems. This ensures any potential issues are resolved before takeoff. Simulations via Mission Planner precede all flights allowing for detailed mission planning and flight data analysis to verify safety parameters. Strict operational boundaries and exclusion zone are included, significantly reducing the risk of accidents. Failsafes have been configured for different cases of communication loss during the mission keeping in mind both safety of the aircraft and other elements in the area. We have carried out various full mission tests, both in simulation and in real life. Across the seven full mission tests, we have calculated various scores as shown on the screen. conducted three flights as specified in the rule book. In the first flight, our safety pilot performed takeoff, got 1000 feet away and performed manual landing. In the second flight, an autonomous flight is conducted. The UAV performed takeoff, captured waypoints with 200 feet distance, then a safety pilot performed takeover and landed. For the third flight, we conducted a fully autonomous flight with takeoff and landing to show that our UAV can meet all the flight performance requirements. Because a vehicle is rotor wing, it can climb and descend in any angle. As a result of a meticulous design and development process, Freya fully satisfies the required acceptance criteria for this year's competition. Based on the results of our extensive testing, we are confident that we can successfully complete this year's mission demonstration autonomously. We wish all the competing teams and their UAVs the very best of luck.